You are watching a special edition of The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. Today's topic, natural hormone replacement therapy. My first guest is a medical doctor who specializes in women's health and bioidentical hormone replacement. If you are considering hormone replacement therapy, you have to hear what my guest has to say. My advice, stick around for the latest edition of The Wellness Hour. The Wellness Hour. An in-depth discussion with today's top physicians and medical leaders. And now, your host, Randy Alvarez. You are watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. My first guest is Wendy Rashidi, MD. Dr. Rashidi is the founder and medical director of Women's View Medical Group in Upland, California. We've invited her on the program today to discuss bioidentical hormone replacement therapy, which happens to be her specialty. Dr. Rashidi, welcome to the program. Thank you very much, Randy. Let's begin with your background and your training. Okay, I graduated from uh, medical school, University of Illinois, okay. and uh, prior to entering medical school, I also worked on my master's in clinical nutrition, and I always had a strong interest in natural medicine and have been developing a practice, all ages and true family practice, but I have also looked at doing family practice from uh, a more holistic, natural way of practicing medicine, incorporating all aspects of conventional medicine that I learned in medical school, sure. along with additional training that I've taken over the years to become familiar with uh, nutritional, herbal, and all aspects of natural care that many patients are looking for to avoid some of the uh, expense and side effects that we're hearing more and more about in the news today. Now, you know, we talked in the core of my notes, you practice integrative medicine. Exactly uh, what is that? Explain that. In well, your view. integrative medicine is a way of looking at all types of medical care that you could offer to the patient. And I have what I call a continuum of care options. Mm -hmm. And we have to look at the very basic things that one needs for good health. Things like breathing good air, getting good sleep, getting exercise. These are important aspects of health care that we, we sometimes take for granted and overlook. And when people hear this from their medical doctor, it does help them to incorporate that into their their medical care, and then we move on from there into if your health needs further adjustment, we may need okay. to use nutritional supplements, herbal supplements, and when necessary, then we move into uh, what I consider, uh, you know, the more interventional cares where you introduce a drug, where you recommend surgery, and I reserve those for the more serious needs and try to help a patient achieve their optimal wellness utilizing their food and supplements and things that are safer and more natural. Let's begin then with who's a candidate for bioidentical hormones? Well, women who are looking for living well into the, the next half of their life and being able to enjoy those years and really feel energy, sleep well, not suffer from hot flashes, mood swings, and some of the symptoms that are associated with the menopause. So when does it start? At what age? Do the women say, okay, I think I may need hormones? Well, the average age is somewhere between 45 and 55, but I've had women who have started their menopause in their 30s. What so are it the can symptoms, be younger. the first symptoms? Symptoms are be beginning with uh, having interrupted sleep, interrupted sleep especially associated with hot flashes or uh, waking up in a, in a sweat during the okay. night. And they may also begin to feel that they can't focus and concentrate as well, and they're moodier and they are uh, not feeling like you know they're they're good mothers with their with their children because they snap easily and they just don't have like the PMS energy style symptoms all of those symptoms are are just a part of a continuum uh, PMS is actually more common as you approach menopause okay and it it kind of blends into it all of those hormonal changes begin to uh, give women difficulty with functioning at their best. I if a woman is looking forward to living well and as they enter their 40s and, and, uh, and, on and beyond, they wanna, they wanna feel good. They wanna have energy for their children, energy to be with their spouse and then continue to enjoy their relationship. Losing libido. I, th I think that's a myth. Everybody just okay. succumbs to the myth of, you know, I'm supposed to be tired and ache and have no energy when I get older, but. Uh, many women have found that these are the best years of their lives. They've, okay. they've really, they've raised their children. They can look forward to doing the things that they always wanted to do, whether it involves their careers or whether it involves hobbies, volunteer, and they want to have the, the energy and, and feel sharp and they want to, and they want to stay well physically and hormones help them accomplish that. So are you replacing hormones or are you replenishing hormones? 
more replenishing or supplementing hormones. Okay. Uh, depending on a woman's status, I look at every woman's situation individually because okay. some may have come in and already had a hysterectomy and their ovaries are gone. And that's different than a woman who goes through a, a natural menopause. Um, a surgical menopause is, is much more abrupt and much more uncomfortable. And the ovaries are gone. So there you really have to replace hormones okay. as opposed to supplement and replenish. And I look at each woman's uh, history and situation individually. We want to look at our risk factors. So what, what's happening look at actually? As a woman gets mm -hmm. older, hormone levels drop? Like hormone testosterone, estrogen, exactly. all of those things? All of those hormone levels begin to drop off. The first hormone that drops off is progesterone. Uh, followed by estrogen and eventually the testosterone levels decline. Our DHEA levels are declining throughout life. And this is actually true for women and men. Okay. The difference being it's much more dramatic for women. It happens as the menopause, they get all these symptoms. If you look over the lifespan of a man, it's a much more just gradual tapering right. down. Why do you think that is? And uh, the reproductive function of okay. hormones in women. And so, uh, Menopause is much more t discussed than what some people call the andropause, mm -hmm. uh, which is the same event in men but takes place gradually. So, and, and women are looking for, they're proactive really with their health. They're looking for how are they going to be, uh, you know, the energetic person that they want to be. So you say women feel that much better taking I, hormones? I hear it over and over. I've like been miracle doing this. stories? I've been doing this for 10 years and I am so gratified by the, the women who come back in and say how, what a change in their life it's made. And many times their husbands come back in as well and say, thank you, I have my wife back. So what are the commonly replaced hormones? Uh, the common ones include the estrogens, estriol, estradiol, and estrone, testosterone, progesterone, DHEA, and of course thyroid. Okay, let's start there with thyroid. How does somebody know if they have uh, low thyroid? Low thyroid is a very common condition. It affects 20% of women over the age of 40. And they begin with things like feeling tired. They notice dry skin, dry hair, dulling of the skin and hair, dulling and brittle nails. Okay. They also notice weight gain. They notice fatigue. They have difficulty with clarity in their thinking. It can also affect their menstrual periods. So it can affect really the, the entire system. Low thyroid can even make your cholesterol levels go up. You told me on the telephone, you said that some people have been told their thyroid is fine based on testing, mm -hmm. but you look at it differently. What do you mean by that? Well, if somebody looks only at the, the traditional test, which is a TSH test, okay. that can't, it doesn't give you the whole picture because you can have uh, that level be, lo be normal, uh -huh. and, and the ranges of normal are currently being. Um, disputed. Uh, people think that it should actually be a tighter range to uh, call it normal. And another method, the original method of looking at whether somebody was low thyroid or not, was to look at their basal body temperature. Okay. And I have women coming in who they have a low basal body temperature, they have all the symptoms, and their TSH is borderline, other people would call it normal. Well, we look deeper. We want to okay. find out what's really going on there. So you say you just don't treat uh, blood work. No. Tell me about that. Well, we want to look at that whole picture. We want to look at what are the symptoms and get a complete history with all the symptom complex. Um, I forgot an important one. Constipation is also okay. associated with could it. Could mean you have a thyroid condition. It could mean that. Absolutely. And, and it happens more as the other hormones start changing. So you need to sort this out. And I test not only their thyroid hormones, but then I look at what's their estrogen and progesterone doing. Those levels can so and should be tested. So you're looking at all the hormones? All the hormones. You say balance. So what do you do? They go in, they get a test, tell and me what happens. When they come in, we take a comprehensive history and physical. We're going to be looking at, you know, do they have family history of thyroid? If your mother and sister have thyroid, you should be thinking you could have thyroid too. Okay. We want to look at comprehensive blood testing. And we may also do some saliva hormone testing because okay. that can sometimes give us a, a, a better picture of what's going on overall. I may ask a woman to keep track of her basal body temperature. And if it's consistently low, then I think she deserves a trial of treatment so with So low thyroid. temperature. They low wake temperature. up in the morning, and they 98 have degrees, Less than 98 degrees. degrees. Yeah, when they wake up and they're 96, 97, they have a slow thyroid. 
And your thyroid controls the metabolism of everything in the body. Okay. And so it regulates how much energy you have, how clear you can think. It does all these things. And you just can't, you can't be at your best if your in thyroid's your practice, not at your best. In your practice, have you seen women that come in, they have a lot of the symptoms you're talking about? And, and even though we're talking about a lot of different hormones, but thyroid in particular, have you seen that thyroid seem to work for them? Like a, a fast result? Or does it happen over time? I mean, for some. You know, when thyroid patients come in and are identified, they are so grateful. Sometimes they're looking for very quick results, and a few get that. But the majority, we have to work with them and, and address both their nutrition, help them with all their hormones. Okay. Usually, usually the other hormones are complementary to the thyroid. And we have to look at... Um, uh, using a natural thyroid is usually my choice and looking at also other factors women can have autoimmune activity against their own thyroids okay. and I do a very comprehensive testing and screening looking for all those factors if there's a mistake in the world of hormone replacement therapy the way it's being done because I guess not all doctors are doing hormone replacement therapy the same way what would you say that is well I really think anytime you give introduce a, a synthetic chemical to any human beings body you really can't predict all the things that it's going to do because it's going to do... What do you say to the woman, though, that says, I've been taking Permanent for 20 years, synthetic hormone, and she says, I feel fine. That woman has been on the same hormone. She doesn't really know the difference between how, how she might feel on Permanent and how she might feel on natural hormone replacement therapy because natural hormone replacement therapy is much more comprehensive, actually, than Permanent therapy. She will feel better and uh, I think she'll feel better. That's the experience that I get okay. in the feedback from all the patients so that I've late, treated. Then. Not it's too late. not Somebody too late. Somebody that's been on it for years. Someone could choose to change, absolutely. Do they do that all the time? My patients do, and they come back surprised with how much better they feel. Okay, let's move on to the other commonly replaced mm -hmm. hormone, testosterone, and, and today we're talking about women. I don't even think of women as having testosterone levels. Women have all the, all the hormones. And actually, men and women all have estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, DHEA. Okay. And they each have a particular function in the body. They come in different amounts, of course, in men and women. It's important for their immune function. It's important for their bone strength. And it's important for their muscle strength. Okay. And so if they're finding that they're experiencing more frailty as they're aging. Is testosterone mainly used for sex drive? Oh no, uh, it's one of the important aspects of testosterone, but other important aspects include its ability to support the immune system, your muscles and bone strength, and it's also very important for maintaining your ability to um, keep your metabolic rate up. Uh, that's one thing that, that uh, I think when you've given only Premarin and not some testosterone, women lose their metabolism. So unexplained weight gain. And so weight gain a is a result of low testosterone. And, and actually, I test everybody and see where their hormones are. And if somebody already has a naturally high testosterone, you then they may it. not need it. So if somebody's tuning in and says, well, Dr. Rashidi's just stuffing everybody with hormones, that's her way for better health. True, not true? Not true. I'm looking at this comprehensively. Uh, paying attention to their nutrition, their exercise, and then we look at their levels. How's okay. their thyroid? How's their adrenals? How is, how is their hormone in terms of their estrogen levels, their progesterone levels, their testosterone levels, and their DHEA levels, which is um, a marker, a biomarker of aging. And so I look at that in all my patients, men and women. I talk to women. Some have said, I tried hormone replacement therapy. It didn't work. What do you say to them? Well, they may not have tried what I consider bioidentical hormone replacement therapy, where we really customize it to that individual woman. Okay. And if somebody was given hormone replacement therapy that they thought was natural, but maybe it wasn't really uh, true hormonal replacement, there's things out there like wild yam and over -the -counter black hormones. cohosh, over-the-counter things that aren't the same as bioidentical hormone. It's confusing sometimes the term natural replacement and so on. And also, it, it really takes some experience to be able to help sort out an individual woman's symptoms and find the right replacement combination for an individual Words like woman. Words like titrating the hormones, what is that? Uh, we, we bring people back in once they've been given their um, initial starting dose that we've chosen based on their individual blood levels and symptoms okay. and so on. And then we bring them back in and listen to what's happened in the time that they've been on the hormones. And, and this is the key to that patient you referred to that said they tried it. We okay. need to look at their levels again and see, did we get it right? Are they absorbing the hormones? So are these women being given topicals? 
that they rub on? Are they pills? What are they? Well, every patient in my practice comes in and we go for an individualized, customized approach. And we discuss what preferences might be. We look at individual health issues that might help us choose whether it should be a, a cream or a uh, oral approach because okay. there's reasons why um, one would choose one over the other. And sometimes it's just patient preference. They are more is familiar. Is one more effective than the other? In some people it is. And that's okay. where bringing them back in and testing their levels. And if swallowing a pill doesn't get their levels up, then we may need to switch to a different method to get their levels to the appropriate um, balance that we're looking for. Okay, we're gonna take a quick break. We come back, more about hormones, estrogen, DHEA, and who's a candidate, again, for bioidentical hormone replacement. You're watching The Wellness Hour. I'm Randy Alvarez. We're here with hormone expert, Dr. Rashidi, and we'll be right back. You're watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. We're here with Dr. Rashidi, and we're talking about hormone replacement therapy for women. Dr. Rashidi, uh, okay, we've talked about thyroid, testosterone. Uh, what are the other hormones that you are looking at? When I uh, bring somebody in and, and we're looking at their hormonal wellness, we want to know how are their thyroid functions, uh, all the different uh, reproductive hormones, which includes your estrogen, uh, testosterone, progesterone, DHEA levels, and we also look at um, another test called an FSH test, which is um, uh, another test that we, we specifically look to see if a woman's in menopause and how she's responding to the hormones. Uh, we also want to look at uh, things like adrenal function. If we're trying to address fatigue and, and issues of and weight problems, sometimes it's in, in the adrenal. We do live in a stressed world and okay. the adrenal glands are responsible for adrenaline and other hormones that respond to stress. So you're looking at the whole picture. I'm Is that right? Is that fair to say? I'm a family doctor, which means I'm really looking out for all aspects of my patient's health. Now you have two board certifications. I do. Family practice. The American Board of Family Practice and the American Board of Holistic Medicine. So women come to you then, I, I guess sometimes just feeling lousy, not just menopausal women. I mean, we're talking about that today. Yes. Uh, but all types of things. When I look at your brochure, mm -hmm. you do everything, it seems like. I do. My, my goal is to help my patients to achieve optimal wellness. And hormones, of course, are a, a large part of that because without our, our hormones being in balance, we don't feel well, we don't look well, and we don't perform well. Are you convinced, though, that women will really live longer with hormone replacement therapy? I'm more convinced that they're going to live better. Okay. They are going to feel well, and they're going to accomplish the things they want to accomplish, and they will uh, have a, a better balance and, and maintain their um, ability to live optimally well into longer years. And uh, Okay. I, I once heard a quote that I, I like to tell my patients, they want to die young as late in life as possible. Okay, good. Now what about Suzanne Summers? She wrote a book, The Sexy Years. What are your views on that? I think she wrote an excellent book. I think we owe a debt of gratitude to Suzanne Summers for bringing this subject to the attention of the American public in the way that she has. Have you read the book? I have, and I've met her. And, okay. And she is a wonderful spokesperson uh, for women and she has consulted with many physicians and, and she's really gone beyond her experience as, as an actress and, and I'm very impressed with the learning uh, that she has taken upon herself. She seems herself. to be very knowledgeable. I she read her very book, knowledgeable. not the whole book, skimmed mm -hmm. through it. Seems like an overstatement, an exaggeration about feeling so great. And, uh, Is it an overstatement? I mean, well, you're, you're the doctor, you see it. I, I do see people and, and they, they do feel much better and they, I have so many patients come back in. Um, it, is, it is really a joy to practice this medicine and have the patients come back in and say, I feel so much better. Really? And particularly things like insomnia. Really? Uh, you wouldn't think that would be such a big deal, but it's a huge deal to just get a good night's sleep and having your hormones uh, out of balance really disrupts that. So what is your main message then? Uh, somebody tuning in, woman on the couch, considering it, maybe confused, skeptical. What do you want them to know about natural hormones? Okay. Well, I think they need to know of the availability of natural hormones. Uh, they need to know that they can be very, very, very beneficial for them. And I want them to know that there are physicians out there that have uh, learned and, and become an expert. They need to look for that type of physician who uh, is very familiar and has a lot of experience in prescribing the customized bioidentical hormones. So, so look for a doctor 
me. You ask the doctor? Yeah. How long have you been practicing? Ask them how long they've been specific? prescribing bioidentical okay. hormones and what their training and experience Because there is. is a learning curve? There is. I, Steve? As I said, I've been doing this for about 10 years. I train uh, other medical providers. That's right. You lecture I on do. the subject. Yes. And so I have uh, provided training to other physicians to learn how to uh, do the testing and uh, make the assessments and uh, customize and do the appropriate uh, prescribing for their patients. Okay, good. And, and we are just about out of time. There was a lot of other hormones that I had questions about. Estrogen, progesterone, tell me about those. Well, estrogen, women make three kinds, uh, estradiol, estriol, and estrone. And these are the bioidentical hormones that we're replacing. Okay. Uh, we also want there to be progesterone because this balances out the effects of the estrogen testosterone to help again with maintenance of weight, muscle, bone. And then DHEA is often an important balancer, particularly in that woman who is stressed and fatigued because DHA is kind of our um, reserve hormone that helps your okay. adrenal gland function uh, under conditions of stress in which most of us seem to experience plenty of in the modern life. And, and so all of these together can uh, help keep the system supported. Now DHEA, I see you could get it over the counter. What is your feeling about that? Hormone, somebody watching this, yeah. I'm gonna take DHEA. Well, first of all, we have to remember that hormones are powerful and over the counter is not as well regulated as we might like in that regard. Uh, they're available from custom compounding pharmacies and if you go in and, and consult a physician who's an expert in this area, does the testing for you, finds out what your levels are and prescribes an appropriate amount, uh, to be balanced with the other hormones, this is a much better way. Big mistake, you think, then? I think People self-prescribing? I think it's a big mistake to just, you know, get read about it hormones. and go out and get something over the counter. There are side effects and problems from taking too much, and that's fairly easy to do with the doses that are available over the counter. So is it always a combination? Thyroid, testosterone, progesterone, estrogen, DHEA, a little bit of this, a little bit of that? Or sometimes is it yeah. one? Well, you know, when you think about it, this is nature's way. Nature okay. doesn't do any one thing. Nature does a little of everything, gets it in balance, and that's what makes things work for us. But what about the side effects, negative side effects? We've talked a lot about the benefits. What could go wrong? Well, certainly this is why you should do it in consultation with a physician experienced in this uh, area of practice okay. using bioidentical hormones. But I hear like male pattern baldness uh, happening, speeding up of cancers. How do you avoid that? Well, this is where you want to do the testing and work with an expert. You want to uh, be aware that too much of one and being out of balance can cause those problems. And if you're consulting with a physician, testing and rebalancing the hormones, you're likely to be able to avoid that. Again, work closely with a physician. So as Suzanne Summer says in her book, that the second half of life can be the best half. You agree with that? You I see do. it in your practice? I do, and uh, I have patients in my practice who are over 100 years old. I really? I do. On hormones? Uh, on hormones. Okay. And they are, they are living well, and uh, I, I fully look forward myself, and I think many of us do, to living into the second uh, half century of our lives, enjoying it, and uh, living it to the fullest. Now, you say you specialize in listening to your patients. What do you mean by that? When my patients come in, they have a story to tell me and I need to sit and listen to that story so that I can really understand what their goals are and what they need help with and then we can choose the appropriate testing, elicit what symptoms are uh, in need of some, uh, some help and, and go from there. But it all starts with sitting down and having a little conversation and, and being a good listener. So you're putting it all together for your patients? I mean nutrition, <coughs> you say? Uh, hormones? Yes, absolutely. Um, when my patient comes in, we, we really have to look at the whole picture. If the only thing you do for your health is take hormones, it's not going to be the whole picture. If you're not getting good exercise, sleep, and, and really looking after yourself in totality, then you're not going to get the same results as if you do all those things. And sometimes people need a little coaching in that area. Okay. And so I work as, as their coach and their assistant and their listener to help them to achieve uh, an optimal wellness and, and to live well. Why do you like this I, type of medicine? I like this because I get the results. You know, I went into medicine to, you know, because I love people and I love to help their, them with their uh, medical problems. And, and I have such a strong belief in uh, working with nature 
Okay. And much of medicine nowadays works against nature, and sometimes that's necessary when you get to a point of crisis, but I really like to prevent those problems well ahead and, and help those people who really want to live uh, an enjoyable life where they can be uh, not only enjoyable in their own lives, but you know, we all, we all owe a little service back to the world. Okay. And to have the energy to do that is what I want to help with. Thanks for coming on the show. Very interesting. Thank you very much, Randy. Enjoyed being here. You've been watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news and information. I'm Randy Alvarez. If you would like information about future airings of this program or watch this program online, you can visit our website at wellnesshour.com. For now, I wish you good health. Thanks for watching The Wellness Hour, the leader in medical news with your host, Randy Alvarez, the authority on health issues.